So in this video, we're going to look at polarizers. Polarizers are in a whole lot of things, like camera optics, telescope optics, sunglasses, uh, phone screens, computer screens. The screen you're watching this video on right now probably has a polarizer on front of it. So what's a polarizer? How does a polarizer work? So let's start with what a polarizer does. Polarizer basically takes electromagnetic waves and filters them by the direction of the electric field. So we know at this point that we can find the speed of light from the magnitude of the electric field divided by the magnitude of the magnetic field, right? And we talked about electromagnetic waves. So looking at this, we can take this and we can reason that the electric field magnitude must be much greater than the magnetic field magnitude. And the reason for this is C, the speed of light, is three times 10 to the eighth, right? This number, in order for it to be humongous, that means the numerator has to be a lot bigger than the denominator, right? So because it's such a big number, we can tell the electric field component is gonna be a lot bigger than the magnetic field component. In reality, this is how polarizers work. Polarizers filter the electric field component of electromagnetic waves. So we'll define the polarization of an electromagnetic wave as the direction in which the electric field component is oscillating. In this picture of an electromagnetic wave, you can see the electric and magnetic fields. So we're gonna use arrows to show the direction of the electric field and therefore the direction of polarization of the wave. Okay, so how does a polarizer work? Basically, they take this material and they stretch it out into these long sheets. And in stretching it out into these sheets, it makes the molecules kind of line up like this. So these molecules make these big long chains, right? And these molecules, because of the way they're bonded, they're able to vibrate this way, but they're not able to vibrate side to side because of the way the bonds are holding them together. So let's say I have an electromagnetic wave that comes in and its electric field is oriented perpendicular to these chains of molecules. This electromagnetic wave is gonna make these molecules be able to vibrate this way, so they're gonna get absorbed and then re-emitted back out the other side. So this electromagnetic wave is gonna be allowed through the polarizer. But if I have an electromagnetic wave whose polarization axis is parallel to these chains of molecules, it wants the molecules to vibrate this way because of the electric field, right? But these things are bonded that way and they can't move. So what happens is this electromagnetic wave is just gonna get absorbed by these molecules and they can't vibrate to re-emit it. So this one will go through and this one won't. Okay, so this is cool and all, right? But not every electromagnetic wave is gonna be oriented in one of these two directions, right? You could have a bunch of different random polarizations, right? So let's say I have one that's kind of oriented at an angle this way. So what would happen to this one? Well, if you remember, electromagnetic fields are vectors, right? So I can break this electric field into a component that's vibrating perpendicular to the field, right? And I can also break it into one that's vibrating parallel to the field. So I have an electric field that's perpendicular, an electric field that's parallel. And now I know that the perpendicular one is going to be able to get through because I just talked about why these can get through. And the parallel component is going to get absorbed because that's the way these chains are and it's going to absorb all the electric field that's coming in, right? So this one and this one won't get through, but these two are going to get through. So you can kind of see that this is my original vector. It's going to be a little bit less, but you're still going to have some able to come through. Okay, so a normal light source like a light bulb or something like that is what we call unpolarized light. And so I'm going to represent it by drawing uh, polarization axes going like all different places, right? So normal light that comes in doesn't have to be uh, polarized in a certain way. Like a light bulb gives off light that's polarized in all different directions. So if I take this and I put it through a polarizing filter whose filter axis points up and down, right? So I'm drawing the grates in the direction of the polarization axis that's going to uh, be allowed through that filter. When this comes through here, the only light that comes out is going to be directed in the direction of the polarizing filter. Okay, so in general, for unpolarized light, you get about half of the intensity out that you put in. So my initial intensity over here was this unpolarized light, that's I naught. The I that comes out here is going to be equal to that initial divided by two. And the reason it's divided by two, you might look at it and say, oh, well, it's only letting through the stuff up and down, right? Well, that's true, but remember, if I have some that look like this, that are oriented this way, right? Each of these has a component that's gonna be in the direction of the polarization axis, right? So this one here is gonna have 
a component that looks like that. This one pointing this way is going to have a component that looks like that, right? One that's pointing, you know, kind of like this, not totally in the direction, is going to have a component that looks like this. So there's all going to be some components, and it all kind of works out to be about half of the intensity gets through. Okay, so what happens if I take polarized light and I stick it through another polarizer? So now I'm going to take this light and I'm going to pass it through a polarizer that's at some angle like this to my initial one. So it's oriented this way at some angle to the original filter, right? So now what's going to come out is, again, only stuff that's oriented with the polarizer. So it's going to be oriented in this direction. And the way to figure out the intensity here is by using what's called Malice's Law. So Malice's Law says that the intensity of the light that comes out is going to be equal to the intensity of the light that came in over here times the cosine squared of the angle between the two polarizing filters. So let's say this is 45 degrees. If this is a 45 degree angle, I would plug 45 degrees into here and I could solve for the intensity of the light that comes out. So we got to remember, unpolarized light gets cut in half going through a polarizer. Polarized light going from one orientation to another, you're going to use Malice's Law, I equals I naught times cosine squared of the angle between the two polarizing axes. So let's look at some polarizers in action. So I've got these two polarizers and they're both labeled with arrows and these arrows show the direction of polarization, right? So any light that makes it through this polarizer is going to have its electric field pointing this way. And if I turn it, right, now this is only going to let light through that has its polarization axis this way. Okay, so when you look at me, this is unpolarized light that's bouncing off me going into the camera. When I put the filter in front of me, this only lets through stuff polarized this way. So the intensity decreases, right? That makes sense. We just talked about it. It about cuts the intensity in half. Okay, what if I take a second polarizer? Second polarizer oriented same way. What's going to happen? Nothing. And it should make sense because all the light that made it through this polarizer will also make it through this polarizer because they're oriented the same way, right? Okay, the magic comes when you start orienting, orienting them different from each other, right, at an angle. So watch what happens. I put these two in front of me. As I change the angle between them, you can see less and less and less light gets through until I get to the point right about there where they're 90 degrees to each other, and now no light gets through, so you can't see me. And then if I do this without dropping it, Starting at 90 degrees, I keep going. Now it comes back in, right? Because again, even though one's pointing up and one's pointing down, they're both along the same axis up and down. And now some light comes through. But 90 degrees, nothing gets through because all the light coming this way that was up and down is being blocked by this one. Polarized sunglasses use this principle to cut down on glare. The light from the sun is unpolarized, but the sunlight that reflects off of a shiny surface like a windshield or like a part of a car or like a body of water like a lake, it's going to be polarized parallel to the surface. So polarized sunglasses have polarizers that are oriented up and down so that they're perpendicular to the polarization of the reflected light, which results in most of the glare getting blocked. You can check to see if your sunglasses are polarized by tilting your head sideways so that the polarizers will be aligned with the glare and allow them to pass through. So if you're able to tilt your head and see the glare return and then disappear when you put your head right back up, then you know your glasses are good.